Hello YouTube, Garjo here aka The Dragon Ball Gamer and today we'll be taking a look at the rarest Dragon Ball games in existence. Now to clarify, we'll only be counting games that actually work with the system, not those LCD handhelds or that Apple Pippin game because let's be honest that's not even a real game, it's more like a colouring book. Uh, the same goes for the Playdia games because they're more like interactive DVDs. Let's get started. When talking about rare Dragon Ball games, the first one that comes to a lot of people's minds, especially in the West, is Dragon Ball GT Final Bout for the PlayStation 1. However, after its re-release, I personally don't see this game as hard to come by or even expensive, but it is worth mentioning that at one time this game was going for well over $100. So to me, the entry level rare games uh, for Dragon Ball Z in particular are basically the, the Game Boy handheld games boxed. And uh, you know, I had to put emphasis on box there because you know, getting them without the box is so easy that uh, you know, I wouldn't consider that rare at all. So they're easy enough to come by and are cheap enough to get you started. Um, the good thing about getting them to start off with is that they are becoming increasingly difficult to find in good shape. So it doesn't start or it doesn't hurt to start uh, there if you want to collect Dragon Ball Z games and get some rare stuff uh, before it gets too expensive. Uh, so now we'll take a look at some rare PAL DBZ games. The Batuden series on the Super Nintendo uh, was released in France, Spain and Portugal back in the 90s but very little of them are around today, um, especially if you're looking for them complete in box. DBZ Hyper Dimension is the same and for whatever reason it's just hard to come by in the PAL format. Uh, however, the Japanese counterparts are in comparisons to the European games, uh, very cheap and reasonably priced, uh, especially if you're not looking for boxes. So now we're on to what I would consider the, the kind of top level uh, rare Dragon Ball Z games. Uh, these are the games that you're only going to go for whenever you're really sure that you're into collecting Dragon Ball Z video games. So the first one I'm going to talk about is Dragon Ball for the Super Cassette Vision. It's the first Dragon Ball uh, slash Dragon Ball Z game ever and the only one not made by Bandai, instead it was made by Epoch. Uh, the game rarely shows up on eBay and when it does, it doesn't come with a manual and box, uh, which to me is really what you want to be getting whenever you're going to be paying top dollar for a game. Uh, the next game I'm going to talk about is Dragon Ball Z 2V. Uh, uh, it's a version of Dragon Ball Z Budokai 2 uh, that was only available to 2000 V-Jump readers. The game differs from the original by featuring Cooler uh, on the disc and in the game along with a uh, Kariza skin for Frieza. And for those of you who don't know, Kariza is Frieza's son. So lastly, we're going to look at uh, the Grail of Grails, basically the Holy Grail of any DBZ game collector. Um, these are the gold carts of the NES games that were only given to retailers that sold well. Um, they're rumoured to only have around 90 of the first game and 25 of the second. Uh, these games turn up on eBay every once in a while for over a grand each, so over a thousand dollars, pounds, whatever you want to call it. And having these games to me is the pinnacle of DBZ video game collecting. So that's all I have to say on the rarity of DBZ video games. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, if you want to learn more about the collecting aspect of the DBZ fa fan base, uh, head on over to the Facebook group DBZ Collectors United. And if there are any Dragon Ball games that you think are rare that I left out, then let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to hear more from me, Click the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.